small guide on using the new Revel Scan version 5.1. For here, we're going to do just a regular scan so we can turn off all the color options. This little checkbox turns off the color scanning. The other checkbox I did in the beginning turns off the flashing white lights for the POP3. That's the scanner that I'm going to be using today. This window right here, I'll just close it since I'm not doing a color scan. I don't need it in there. These are the keyboard shortcuts to adjust the exposure. Left and right is for the scanning camera. Up and down is for the RGB color camera. So I went ahead and started the scan. This item is kind of symmetrical. So you'll see what happens with that. I simply paused it right here so that I can rotate it. Now that I've rotated, I start back scanning. As you can see, it kind of got off track and it looks like it corrected itself. But this is one of those things that happens when you're scanning a symmetrical item in featured mode. Most of the features are just not enough and it gets kind of off track and it starts scanning and you start to see kind of duplicates, which you can see right here. And if you see for a split second, it spun around and that's simply because it's a symmetrical item. So we'll go ahead and stop this scan because this is an unusable scan, but this is an error that most users run into and they don't realize that the problem is because the item isn't tracking well because it's symmetrical. So we'll just go ahead and close this one out and we'll rescan it using tracking marker dots. I have a link in the description to the ones that I use. These are the little balls that I created that you attach markers to after 3D printing it. As you can see, all the little red dots are the markers that are showing up. For most of the Revel Point scanners, you want at least six of these dots to be within view at all times. I'll go ahead and start the scanning. Right here, as you can see, I'm purposely scanning just the markers, not so much of the item. This helps later as you kind of create a base of where all the markers are. So I'm just coming around the outer edges. Right there, caught a little bit of the floor, but that's fine. Then now I'm just bringing it back over the item just to fill in the scan. There's a couple of times where I say it lost tracking and this is just due to me moving too fast. And see, I'll go ahead and pause it again so that I can just rotate it. Ideally, if you can walk around the item, that's best. But since I'm kind of doing this on like the edge of a bed, it's easier for me to just stand in the front and then just manually rotate it and then get the other side. And this is all real time scanning. I am moving a bit fast just to kind of get this video done. Ideally, I would move a little slower while scanning, but as you can see, it still handles it fairly well. And some of the lag that you see 
is not from the scanner or the software, but it's because I'm recording while scanning at the same time. And here you can see that I tilt the scanner at different angles. This is just simply to capture different parts of the item. As you can see where the hole is, I had to tilt it some so that I could scan inside of it better. And again, a lot of the times where it says that it's lost tracking or unable to track is simply because I'm moving way too fast. I'll go ahead and pause it and now I'll check to see which parts are missing from this scan. As you can see, I didn't get the inside on that edge and that edge. So I'll simply just rotate the item around so that I can get lined up with those spots. Then I'll go ahead and start the scanning. And as you can see, just kind of fill those in. It's kind of like painting. And there we go, we got this part scan. We have to get the back side of it, so we'll go ahead and do that in another scan. Right here, I'm just comparing the marker mode scan versus the featured scan. This time I'll rotate it on its side. A lot of times I like to do a side scan just so I can bridge the front and the back together. And that should be enough. All I'm looking for is just something that's going to have features from the front and features from the back side. So that way I can do a third scan that's simply going to be the, just the back side and I'll be able to merge them together. This will be that third scan. And a lot of times when scanning, it's good to kind of plan it out because where you start your scan is how everything will branch out. So if you start in a bad location and have to make a very sharp turn right away, the scan won't come out as good. So always try to plan out your scan where you start them at. And here I just sped it up just to save time. We've already seen the real time scanning. And this one's finished, this should be enough. So once all the scanning is done, you now have to go through and fuse the points. I'll use the auto mode just to show what it does. And as you can see at the top right, underneath auto ed, it tells you what settings it's using. And as you can see, the model came out fairly pretty clean. Yeah. 
and then this way we'll use the manual mode the way that things work is you go from left to right so you'll do your scanning and then you can do the auto or you can do the fusion which is a manual way of doing it and this is the advanced fusion you can go ahead and read everything that it does here on the little sidebar but basically it goes through and it does isolation and overlap detection and it filters out some of the scan so we'll just set this at a 2 And as you can see, it finished. This is just fusing the point cloud. That's why it doesn't look like the other, because it's still a, it's a point cloud. It's not a mesh model. And you can see the difference from the raw data and the fuse point cloud. Some things are smoothed out. Some things are added back in. It's just simply how it made the point cloud. And we'll here we'll go with the standard fusion, which needs a little bit more manual work to it. Then we'll go through clean up, always run an isolation. That's going to remove all of the items that are outside of the main item. And it gets rid of some of the noise. And then as you can see on the auto one, it does it for you. All the little marker areas were removed. The overlap was removed. And that's how it came out with the model done automatically. So we'll go back to this and we'll do the overlap detection. Most of the time I'll run it at every point one and just keep going up and up just to make sure that there are none. It just depends on the scan itself. This scan, I know that there's noise in it because some spots, the scanning spray had rubbed off. So it left shiny edges and those shiny edges create noise. Also, if you scan in a dusty environment, you will pick up that dust as it floats through the air. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the side scan. Just go through and clean it up. On here, the overlap detection removes a lot of the model. If you don't want that, then you just manually clean it up and just remove the items. You can use the U key or press this for the lasso tool. Now, once you have all of your scans cleaned up, then you can go ahead and go to the merge tab and that's where you build and merge them together. So here I use the rear scan and the front scan. I want to see if they would blend together. There was enough overlap between them. So I just aligned it by the featured mode. And there it go, everything aligned together. I did not need to use that center scan of the side to align it. Right here, you can see where there's a second merge. That's because I used the center one to align it. But after looking at everything, it was a better model with just the two scans. So here we're going to do isolation and cleanup of the merge scan. As you can see right here, there's noise. And this is part where the spray was not on it as well. And it simply was shiny and it simply reflected too much. So I'll just go through and clean up these little areas. And 
and then we can go to the point cloud and go with smooth all this does is kind of shrinks things down to smooth the model a little bit and gets rid of some of the noise then we'll mesh the model and there you go the model is meshed it's a pretty clean model there are some little small areas they are a little bit rough and it's simply due to the noise that was on the item if I would have properly sprayed it and took my time scanning it those little noise areas would not be there and here you can export it you have a chance of exporting as a point cloud or a mesh model you can also export it here right here I simply import it into bamboo studio I'm simply going to rotate it into place you can also reduce the triangle count I like using Prusa slicer or bamboo studio for this since it gives you a live update and a count of how many triangles there are then you export your model here I simply load it into 3d viewer this just gives you a preview of the model and you can set your rotations and everything Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.